हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम यशवंत कानेटकर एंड टुडे लेट्स बिगिन विद द वेरी फर्स्ट सी प्रोग्राम ऑफ दिस कोर्स वी विल कीप थिंग्स वेरी वेरी सिंपल टू बिगिन विथ आई विल स्टार्ट ऑफ विद स्टेटमेंट सेइंग पी इक्वल टू थाउजेंड पॉइंट फाइव देन वन मोर वेरिएबल एन हैविंग ए वैल्यू थ्री and r holding a value 15.5 then i would say simple interest equal to p into n into r slash 100 we are using the standard simple interest formula now every single variable we use in a program needs to be declared at the beginning so three variables p r and s i they are likely to have a floating point value or a float value in them hence declare them at the beginning by saying float p comma r comma si unlike them the variable n is going to hold a value 3 which is an integer hence we should declare n to be an integer variable note that a float variable can hold a real value or a float value whereas a int variable will hold only an int value do realize that when i say s i equal to p into n into r slash 100 that slash try to make use of a backslash that doesn't work don't try to set two upon three don't use this symbol for a division to indicate two divided by three so all these three are wrong the only way we can carry out division in c programming is using the slash operator so every variable must be declared that's the first rule that we have learned secondly these plus minus star slash these are arithmetic operators the way slash is used for division star is used for the multiplication operation lastly if you observe carefully at the end of every statement we are using a semicolon so first statement ends with a semicolon then second ends with a semicolon third ends with a semicolon so on and so forth this semicolon really stands for a statement terminator the way in english language you terminate a statement or a sentence using a full stop similarly in c language you terminate a statement using a semicolon once you have written a statement and given a semicolon you are free to write the next statement in the very same line good practice is to write them in different lines as we have done in this program but if you so desire you are allowed to write multiple statements in one single line so long as they are separated from one another using a semicolon they are perfectly okay fine let's see what has happened in memory because of our program for p n and r three locations must have been chosen Values thousand point five, three and fifteen point must five must have been stored in them, and the names P, N, and R must have been given to them. That's what has happened in memory. So when I say S I equal to P into N into R slash hundred, realize that we are not multiplying alphabets P, N, and R. The moment we use the variable name P, the value that is stored under that location, in our case thousand point five. will be multiplied with the value that is stored under location name n that is 3 and the result would then be subsequently multiplied with 15.5 whatever result you get out of these multiplications that is finally divided by 100 value that you obtain out of this will be stored in yet another location maybe p into n into r slash 100 turns out to be 465.25 so that is stored in yet another location and the name si is given to that location but what is stored in the, this location is not visible to me with a naked eye so i need some agent who will pick the value from this memory location and display it at a place where i can see it that agent is a function called printf and the place where it will display the value of si is naturally the screen that's your output device the way to employ this agent print def is to say print def then a pair of parentheses and the variable whose value we wish to print on the screen 
in this case it is SI. Tomorrow if I want to see the value of P on the screen, we would naturally say printf P. Similarly, printf N, printf R also can be employed. Right now we are of course interested only in printing the value of SI. Note that just saying printf SI is not enough. Before SI we need to use within double quotes what is known as a format specifier. So this percent %f that we are using is known as a format specifier. Every format specifier begins with a percentage. f indicates that we are trying to print out a float value. si is a float variable, that's why we employed percent %f. Tomorrow in some other program, if si turns out to be an int variable, we would employ percent %i. And in yet another program, if si is a char variable, we would employ percent %c. So percent %f, percent %i, percent %c are format specifiers used for printing out a float, an int, and a char respectively. Notice that with printf, what we have used is a pair of parentheses. Don't call them as rounded brackets, that's a wrong terminology. Always use this terminology, parentheses, braces, and brackets. They are distinct, they are different. In C programming, all three are allowed, but each is used with a different purpose in mind. So with printf, we should always employ a pair of parentheses. Now what we have done so far is this. If you notice carefully, here we have said P equal to 1000.5, N equal to 3 and R equal to 15.5 in one single line. Again notice that we have managed to separate them using the statement terminator that is semicolon. Now we need to somehow or the other be able to tell the machine what is it that we want to get executed from it. Whether only first two statements or five statements or seven statements, which statements we want to get executed, that we have to instruct the machine. The way to do so is to put all these statements under a collective name main, such that it becomes easier for us to communicate to the machine as to what is it that we wish to get executed. If we just say execute main, then all statements that belong to main would get executed. Main for that matter is known as a function. Why is it a function? Well, because in C programming, the rule is that any word followed by a pair of parentheses is always known as a function. So main hence qualifies as a function. Then what statements belong to main? That's indicated by enclosing all those statements within a pair of braces. These braces are known as scope delimiters. They are so known because they basically are used to delimit the scope of main, indicate the scope of main, indicate what statements belong to main. Whatever falls within those pair of braces belongs to main. Notice also very carefully that whatever is within the pair of braces has been indented to the right using a tag. Follow that habit very faithfully. Wherever you define a function, put the statements within a pair of braces, give a collective name to those statements, and then indent the statements to the right using a tab key. Don't use spaces, always use a tab. Then preceding main, if you observe carefully, we also said int. That int indicates what type of value the function main is going to return. And the convention is, that at the end of main, you always return a zero, indicating success. Zero in C programming would always mean success, non-zero value would mean failure. Since every statement above return zero has been executed successfully, we are saying return zero at the end. Also realize that that zero can be written within a pair of parentheses, or if you so desire, you can drop the pair of parentheses in that sense, pair of parentheses is really optional. Your choice whether to use it or not. Tomorrow in some other program, you have maybe 100 statements. And within those 100 statements, there are several operations that you are carrying out. If one of the operation fails, you may return a value 10. If another operation fails, you may return a value 20. 
if the third operation fails you may return a value 30 so these non zero values that you return they always indicate failure if there is no failure in all the 100 statements then at the end you can return a success by saying return zero so always say int main at the top and return zero at the bottom part and parcel of every c program lastly we should also say hash include stdio.h at the beginning that symbol that we are making use of is known as a hash include is what is known as a preprocessor directive what it is we will get into that a little later as of now just understand that stdio.h stands for standard input output dot header file it is necessary to include this file for the printf to be able to work most of the library functions if we have to make use of library means ready made functions printf happens to be ready made function any time we have to use these ready made functions we will have to include a suitable file for printf to work we are required to include the file stdio.h so much about the very first program that we wanted to learn in this course now whenever we write a program make sure that at the top you always give the purpose of the program in the form of a comment that comment should always be enclosed within a pair of slash star star slash combination you are free to give whatever text you want within this slash star star slash combination it's going to be treated as a comment needless to say you can give any number of comments anywhere within the program at the top in the middle at the bottom wherever you wish usually what is given in this comment is the purpose of the program secondly the author of the program thirdly the date of creation of the program these three are almost there in every single program as comments at the top best way is now take the next step type out this program get it executed you are free to make use of absolutely any compiler that you desire make use of the good old turbo c++ if you wish or make use of visual studio or make use of gcc compiler or if you do not want to install any of these on your machines then you can always go online to onlinegdb.com once you do that within the browser you are supposed to type out your program and get it executed by hitting the f6 key so use any compiler with all compilers this program is bound to work that i think is the best step forward because more programs you do better will be your confidence level on that note i think we'll stop here goodbye Good luck and thank you.